the first thing i define about fitness is i need to feel good if i'm feeling good both mentally and physically i think then i feel that i'm fit that's the feeling that i get i uh, realized very early on just when I, after i started running that uh, health is extremely important to enjoy your wealth mm-hmm. and uh, mm-hmm. there is no point running behind money mm-hmm. if you're sacrificing your own health yeah. if you don't take care of your body you do not you're not able to take care of right. your mind people who are smokers yeah. people who are chain coffee drinkers and mm. tea drinkers mm. i think they just don't realize how the body gives up beyond a point people in their 30s don't realize they think that anything i put in my body will get processed if your average life span is 80 yeah after 37 and a half years of age you're no longer a time billionaire you don't have billion seconds to live exactly so are you going to sacrifice your billion seconds yeah to chase money yeah what will you do with the money Yeah. If your energy is getting depleted, the idea was if India can play for ten minutes a day, that will change the future of the country. It's not about boy, girl, man, woman. It's India can play for ten minutes a day. Hi, welcome to the other side. I'm your host Dilip, an entrepreneur and an endurance athlete. In this podcast, we'll explore the experiences of high-performing individuals while unpacking their mental. and physical fitness routines that took them to where they are For this episode I'll be speaking with Rajiv Mehta He is currently the CEO of Stovecraft a public listed company known for its kitchen appliance brands like Pigeon Kilma and Black Plus Decker Rajiv has a stellar background as a corporate leader and entrepreneur He launched Puma in India as their first CEO and later grew the business for Arvind Brands He is also an active angel investor. But today, we don't talk doing business in retail, fashion or manufacturing or growing a public company. We will discover how running and training for marathons has shaped Rajiv's personal and professional life, his physical and mental fitness routines, how data helps him to manage his health, why setting intrinsic goals matters the most, and the secret to making the perfect chole. So let's explore his other side. Before you get to the podcast I have one request if you're listening to this on YouTube please subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon to be notified on future releases if you're listening it on Spotify please click on the follow button on top left corner and click on the bell button and if you find the content useful please leave a rating if you're listening to this on Apple podcast please click on the plus sign on the top right corner you can also leave a rating and review if you like the content This would mean a lot and encourages me to keep creating useful content in future. Thank you for your patience. Now let's get to the podcast. Rajiv, thank you. Um you already had a long workout uh to reach this place. I think around <laughs> an hour and a half. So it's uh, very apt to ask what was your morning workout today? <laughs> <laughs> today morning was just a walk um, okay. with a podcast uh listening to a podcast but I I decided not to run because i was feeling a bit under the weather sure so yeah. i did a did a 5 km walk terrific and uh, you you live in a beautiful place of the city where you have all the reasons to walk and run right i mean just close Absolutely. to the lake you just can't miss it right yeah. uh, terrific and what was in your breakfast plate today actually i skipped breakfast <laughs> oh wow what was it uh, so it was back? a brunch oh, okay. uh, since my parents, parents are here, are here. Yeah. they wanted to go out and have um, Tindi. Oh, so okay. we went to Umesh Refreshments in uh, the the one near uh, Kumara Park near the railway. Oh, is some famous place? Yeah, so oh, Umesh okay. is famous. There's okay. one in Sheshadripuram, one in uh, Kumara Park. Okay. And he's opened a recent one in Indira Nagar. Ah, okay. So we went all the way to Kumara Park. Oh, nice. Uh, to get the old school yes, experience. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So and it was totally dosa, worth. idli, vada. Wow. wow. <laughs> so I mean, uh, we shouldn't talk about the calories then because it was a it's a it's a weekend. It's a, with family, absolutely. so you should probably be very chill, right? Yes. Terrific. Now. Um, uh i was uh, uh i was uh, you know uh, that experience i had when i sent you a message uh, last weekend i said rajiv uh, what's up for weekend and he said you know um, i'm thinking to do a full marathon uh, just for fun so just to set some context uh, you know and um, uh, build some perspective how do you run 42.2 kilometers for fun what makes you do that so i think um what i enjoy about running is uh, the fact that uh, if you're running alone you get into the zone right then you can keep thinking and you sometimes are not thinking you're completely blank you're enjoying the view you're enjoying the run yeah uh, but if you're running with someone yeah. what happens is that you start having conversations sure and i think that's interesting 
Yeah. So if someone asks me, can you just come with me and give me company for the run? Yeah. I will do that. Yeah. Um, so whether it's a half or a full, I will I will just mix wow. it up and I'll see if I am game for it. I will yeah. go and run with the person. Right. This is regardless what the pace or whatever it is. You, Usually yeah. at a slow pace. Sure. I would not try and do something because that uh, risks injury. Sure. If I were to run faster. Sure. So usually at a slower pace is what I would then accompany a friend. Sure. Sure. Just to nudge them along and just to give them company. And I'm sure this is coming from you because you're a seasoned guy who has a lot of endurance experience on your legs, can manage to do that conversation in a casual format. And it's not for probably anyone to get up in the morning to say that, okay, let's go back and just do a 21 kilometer, 42 kilometer. Just for, you can't manage. So you have right. trained yourself over the past many years to say that I can go have a, so for people listening and watching who don't know what a run conversation is you run and you also have a conversation, conversation and it's a great uh, way uh, to bond uh, and to kind of meet people and have a i mean we could probably say it's a gala time to kind absolutely. of absolutely have uh, a chill time while yes. you are getting some uh, you know workout done you're getting burning some calories right uh, yeah exactly and i think See, the running journey started 12 years back. Almost yeah, I know. 12, I have to get, get to it. Yeah. So I'm, I'm that way. You're right. I've got a lot of miles uh, yeah. and a lot of experience talking to different runners. Yeah. So and having trained with coaches, yeah. uh, both on the running side as well as strength and strength, conditioning, yeah. I'm also very uh, aware of my body. So sure. I know when I have to listen, I know how much I can push myself. Yeah. So I think that comes with experience. Of course. Comes with a few niggles, few injuries. Right. Uh, Touch wood, nothing very serious. Yeah. But I think that's how I know how much I can push myself. Yeah. And that comes, uh, like you said, it comes with that experience of having gone through a lot of wear and tear. And it's not a, it's not a wearable which is giving you a sign that, okay, now you're ready. Yeah. It, that's the maturity which comes and says that, okay, now you, you wake up in the morning, you feel that, okay, I can do a 10 kilometer. Likewise, you said you wake up, woke up in the morning and said, no, I don't want to run. Exactly. So probably I just want to go for a walk. Yeah. And you managed to just get that done. Absolutely. Terrific. Uh, okay, so fundamental. Uh, how do you define fitness? Like what does fitness mean for you? The first thing I define about fitness is I need to feel good. Hmm. If I'm feeling good, both mentally and physically, hmm. I think then I feel that I'm fit. That's hmm. the feeling that I get. Hmm. But if I were to quantify it or, or give a little bit more metric. So what I tell people is that you need to have endurance. Hmm. You need to have speed, hmm. strength hmm. and flexibility. Sure. If you have almost all of them, mm. you are definitely fit. Mm. Some people have strength and nothing else. Mm. Some people have only flexibility and nothing else. Mm. A lot of people have only endurance and not the others. Mm. So I said, you need to have a, you know, a moderate amount of all of those. And hence you are fit. Mm. So for me, it's extremely important to be um, flexible. Mm. If I was not able to sit in today's puja for half an hour, mm. I would consider myself unfit. Yeah. Because you would cross leg, right. you would sit down on the floor right. and because of the modern work life, right. no one is used to that. True. And it's very difficult for a lot of people unless you're a yoga practitioner. Yeah. So a lot of runners find it difficult to sit cross-legged for more than half an hour, 45 minutes. Right. So for me, that is that is sign of your fitness. Your, yeah, exactly. <laughs> All four aspects. Right. And I don't know if you know, there's also, I don't, uh, this is this test, right? I mean, you sit cross-legged yeah. and if you can stand up without holding anywhere, that's, an, that's a sign that you are fit. Fit. And this is regardless... But then, like you said, look, look wise, you probably might have a six pack or exactly. you might have a muscle, but if you have a strong core and you are, you are strong otherwise, yeah. right. And you are able to pull it off. Okay. That means you're fit. Absolutely. No, terrific. So, um, okay. So, uh, that's, that's how you define, uh, uh, fitness and, and a lot of what you just said, uh, I think, uh, people who have followed you in the past, uh, might know about it and if, Others who are knowing about this version of yours, you're a runner. Yeah. And that's the reason the first two things were endurance and, and speed. speed right? exactly. <laughs> and strength and flexibility came, came later. later. Right? <laughs> now, had it be someone else who probably go to a gym or someone would yeah. probably say your strength. strength right? Exactly. So that kind of defines you. You are yeah. a runner. Right. So let's go back. Right. I mean, so uh, what was your introduction to running? I mean, what was that? When was that? And how did you get into it? So I came to know of uh, long distance running because of my Puma boss. He, okay. uh, for the full nine years that I was at Puma, he was my boss and he was a marathon runner. He did half marathons and full marathons mm. and um, he was fairly fast. I mm. think his half marathon was uh, under 90 minutes. Wow. So he was, he was, he was uh, running at a good clip. Wow. 
and what what age category would he be when so this was about 10 12 years back so he was in the 43 44 Brilliant. category wow. yeah wow. so nearly masters or masters sure. yeah um and it so happened at puma that there were couple of runners i never got into running and mm. this was 2010 11 they had run the standard chartered mumbai marathon and then mm. they were talking about their timing both mm. of them were beyond 205 for mm. a half marathon mm. and i was ridiculing them not having run ever <laughs> saying that you know this is a uh, you know 21 kilometers 2 hours is very slow right and they said no no it's tough i said okay what is your target time and they said if you can do it below 2 hours that's mm. a, that's an achievement mm. so i said okay let's let's try next year in 2011 whenever you do uh, scmm i will sponsor if you are able to do it below 2 yeah. hours i will sponsor your family to go off for two nights three wow. days or something wow. like that wow and it so happened that they tried Okay, but neither of them could achieve below two hours. So this is just to set some context. This is coming from you, who till that moment have never been a runner. Never, runner, and never you have not gone out of sport, right? And you're just taken a bag when someone say, and you just have a number, yeah, two hours, exactly. And you just thought, okay, two hours, right? And what's the big deal, yeah. right? Okay, and you throw up a deal to say that okay, if you can crack, go eyes on me. Yes, wow, exactly. Okay, and did they? And they were not able to. Okay, so I am, and by nature, I'm a risk taker. Okay. So I further ridiculed them, trying to push them. See, we are all young. I'm 2010, 11. Right. I was in my early 30s, late right. early 30s. So I was like uh, egging them on that hey, you guys tried so hard. I gave you a year. You did not put your heart and mind to it. Right. If you would have thought, they're like, okay, we challenge you. Okay. If you are able to do it under two hours, mm. we will sponsor you to go. Okay. I said done. Challenge accepted. <laughs> okay. And they're like, you've never run. You don't even know. Okay. You can't even run two hundred meters. Right. And I was heavy. I was ninety five kilos. Okay. So I said, listen, I will do it. Don't back out if I do it. Okay. And I think it was two thousand twelve, the mm. first time I ran a half marathon. Okay. I did one hour forty eight something, close Man. to one hour forty nine. Wow. And. I mean I was very happy I was elated I didn't want right. them to sponsor Goa but sure. the the fact that I lost so much of weight the fact right. that I could run such uh, at such a speed for mm. such a long distance mm. just gave me a big thrill mm. and um, all of that I did with myself I didn't okay. take any formal coaching okay. but you were doing some some form of training to kind of get into their group to say that you no, knew nothing. I just oh, nothing. started running 5 kilometers and 5 became 8 8 became 10 10 okay. became 11 okay So you and had like few months or weeks out from the race. You said I'll start right. doing some runs. Okay. So the maximum I had run was seventeen. Oh wow! For so a twenty-one. Yeah, for oh, okay. a twenty-one. Mm. And actually, um, when you climb the Jaslo Hospital Bridge or mm. whatever the flyover, mm. Mm. is when the wall hit hit me in mm. Mumbai. Mm. And I think the last four kilometers were the slowest. Oh, these are the nasty pedal road. Yeah, yeah. pedal road. Uh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So people who are marathoners would dread to know exactly. about pedal road. Yeah, exactly. So mm. I think yeah, but I. And and ever since that 2011 12, I've been I've been running. Terrific. So, so you said so you were 90 odd plus kilos, and at that moment uh, when this banter was happening, um, did you make an attempt to kind of so running uh, came up to you as a form to take the challenge, or you said okay, no, I mean this could also help me kind of shed some weight, get back to some fitness. No, I never thought of it that way. Okay, it was just to protect the the the, the bet, okay, <laughs> just okay. to win the bet. Okay, and then when it's when you start feeling good, mm. when you feel that uh, things are working in your favor, mm. you're looking good. People like appreciate that you've mm. lost weight. People mm. um, and and. for for a long period of time i didn't realize but i was getting more energetic okay i could not relate to it i okay. can now but i could not relate at that time why i was getting more energetic okay i thought it was some kind of an excitement that i had that i'm running mm. but it was both it was the the maybe the endorphins or the dopamine whatever mm. you call after the exercise mm. at the same time it was the fact that you are not lugging so much of extra weight okay and hence you are probably more energetic okay so my diet never changed okay Only thing that changed was how I exercised oh, or okay. how much I exercised. Okay. So did did you get um, uh, any ancillary outcome because of that? I mean, did you see a pattern where now you've started losing weight? Uh, did uh, I mean, and also were you able to continue post that? Like after Mumbai, what happened? Like I mean, did you see any outcomes beyond that? So after Mumbai is when I decided that oh, because I was with Puma, we also sponsored the Urban Stampede. Right, right, right. And hence it was a. a a bunch of 5 kilometer races right, right, in a right. relay race 
So I continued doing shorter distances. Okay. And then the um, TCS 10K. 10K. Came. Okay. Um, that is what I said. That is when I said that I will start training. And I think the first time I did, I don't remember whether it was with Dharmendra D mm. or it was uh, online through someone. Mm. But I trained uh, for under 50. Okay. And I did some 48, close to 49. Wow. Uh, for the TCS 10K the first time. Okay. And then for the next half is mm. when I seriously started, started training. training. And I said right. that now I need to get better. Okay. Now I know how much I can push myself. Right. Uh, how much time I have. And hence I should continue focusing on half. Right. Till I don't get the time I want in half, I should push you myself. You won't move, move ahead. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, right. So uh, 10K, 48 minutes. Yeah. Uh, would that be a personal best? No, I think in trainings I've done much faster. Okay. On, okay. A, on a race, uh, 48. 48, yeah. right. And then you started graduating towards half marathon training and half right. marathon. And I remember you telling me that your half marathon PB is 134. That's right. Very little impressive. Over 134, yeah. So this is a guy who is probably at the helm of running a large corporation, uh, has a super hectic schedule, what someone could imagine of training and cracking a 134, right? Uh, I mean... It would be weird for me to ask what the secret, because there's no secret. I mean, you're grinding it. But what were the things what you were doing, which were actually helping you get this? But clearly you were doing something right. So I think the first thing is discipline. Sure. And I, I tell this to people and um, I, I take my coaches very seriously. Mm. If they tell me that this is what you need to do, because the goal I have set, mm. I had told my coach that I need to do under 100. Mm -hmm for a half marathon. So mm. if he has devised a training for me mm. so that I can become a, a sub 100 half marathoner, mm. then I need to follow it. Mm. So first key was discipline. Mm. And discipline came not only in waking up and following, but mm. also making sure that what you put in so that you could wake up the next day morning. Mm. So I let go some of the late night parties. Mm. People used to make fun of me that if you're going to come party with us, better make sure that it's not Friday night because Saturday he has a long run. Yeah, yeah. So if he's coming on Friday night, he will not drink. Yeah. And if he's coming, you better yeah. make sure he sleeps and he comes yeah. so that he can stay awake yeah. and then go, go for his run. Yeah, these are the friends who hate all the runners. Exactly. <laughs> right. Exactly. Right. So right. discipline was, was right. number one for me. And um, then I think discipline came in all walks of life. I was very clear that work had to be done so I need to plan my day okay. because these are the days I will run. These are the days I have travel. These mm -hmm. are the days. So I used to plan my runs on my travels as well. Okay. So I would tell my coach that I'm going to be in this city Okay. or I'm going to be in uh, the city where there is no way I can run outdoors. Can okay. I run on the treadmill? treadmill. Mm -hmm. So that is how I would either plan uh, the runs mm -hmm. or even plan the hotels. I mm -hmm. would make sure that the hotel has a gym. Mm -hmm. So those were the things that I had to put in place. Mm -hmm. So... Just to set perspective for people who are probably not runners, 134 essentially means you ran 21 kilometers roughly at a pace of 430, 435, That's right. uh, four, four, 30, 4 minute 30 seconds per kilometer and you yeah. ran that for 21 or 21.1 right. kilometers. That's massive, right? And that takes um, immense amount of training. Uh, and uh, immense amount of discipline to get those m amount of training done yeah. and the fact that next day morning uh, you ha also have to hit your office yes. uh, you have to do a travel you have to get your family stuff done uh, what was that thing what kept on driving like i mean people around you they couldn't make any sense of it right i mean i'm not sure about the family but most of the friends, right? I mean, non-runner friends, they won't get what you're doing it, right? Yeah, they won't. They won't be able to get the speed. They don't get why you're running 21. Why you're running, right? I mean, why you're running point yeah, to point, right? Exactly. So what is that drive which kept you on to the sport to say that, I mean, and, and the fact that I'm sure somewhere, you know, that you're not doing this to cut out on an Olympic level no. or anything, right? It's, yeah. it's something which is very intrinsic, like, right? so what was that you said that, Work is getting taxing, uh, you know, family is there, I have kids to manage, uh, but I still got to do this and I want to move on and I want to do another half marathon or another full marathon. So what was, I mean, why, I mean, uh, why that obsession? So I think I, I um, realized very early on, just when I, after I started running, that um, health is extremely important to enjoy your wealth. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. there is no point running behind money mm -hmm. if you're sacrificing your own health. Mm. So for me, health has been uh, front and center ever since then. If I'm able to remain healthy, mm. I will be able to take care of my family come mm. what may. And today, people only talk about physical health. I also give equal importance to mental, mental health. health. Yeah. And uh, a lot of people don't know, but if you know the full form of ASICS, 
anima san in corpore san yeah. which means a sound body has a sound mind yeah or a sound mind is inside a sound body so yeah. if you don't take care of your body you do not you're not able to take care of right. your mind right so for me fitness uh, leads to good health and as a result of which uh, the marathon or running has always been a means to remain healthy and remain fit right. and all the other activities be mm. it diet be it uh, travel be it strength and conditioning is always centered around running right and the reason i chose running as a sport is because in bangalore it's easiest to run alone alone yeah because of my travel even if i have a say play golf or play squash i will need a partner yeah i will need someone to play tennis with if i'm playing tennis with you and suddenly yeah. i go travel yeah. you don't have a partner sure so yeah. people started hating me for that as well mm. uh, so i tried a couple of things and then finally i decided running is best you Works can wear a pair of shoes yeah. Yeah. carry a pair of shoes and even run wherever right 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 uh, so i think yeah and i and, and it's become a thing even on holidays i yeah. remember in 2015 or 6 15 yeah. we went to budapest prague in vienna mm. and i did people do walking tours i did yeah. a running tour i mean that's the best way to explore yes. the city right i mean i mean in few kilometers uh, you could Absolutely. probably get a sense of what the city is all about at morning 6:30 the guy picked me up he was a personal runner with me he carried a bottle of wow. water in a backpack wow he asked me my pace i said we'll run at 6 we can have a conversation terrific and he took me to places which probably people wouldn't have ever been at so early in the morning wow so we did 14 14 and a half kilometers we right. were running for one and a half hours we stopped we took pictures we went wow. into churches wow. uh, that was just uh, brilliant So, uh, uh, running is now taking yeah. you around the world. I mean, I mean, not just uh, uh, to run marathons, but even when you are traveling for work or pleasure, you are getting your runs done. And I'm yeah. sure, uh, I don't know what the love and hate relationship your family is having because they will. We are on a vacation, and dad is getting up, getting on his running shoes, is out for run, and when we are waiting for a easy breakfast to do, right? So, how do you how do you manage that? uh i mean uh, that equation with family like because you're most of the time out yeah right uh, at least the early morning so what's what's a typical um, so what i want to try to get a double click is what's typically your uh, weekday routines like how 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 do you get started in your day how sure. do you wind up in your evening what's your routine like so weekdays um monday wednesday friday is strength okay. so i wake up at 5 5:15 I am uh, in the gym in Koramangala at a stairs physiotherapy clinic mm-hmm. by six. Six mm-hmm. to seven is the session. Mm-hmm. By then I'm I'm home at seven fifteen, seven twenty. Mm-hmm. I uh, have a black coffee. Sometimes I have a protein shake. Okay. Have a couple of nuts. So you have nothing before you hit. Okay. Okay. Nothing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. And by eight I'm out. Uh. Because I have a long commute to work. Work. Mm-hmm. Um. When I get to office, it's typically between nine fifteen and nine twenty five. Okay. Um. I'm at work um, it's pretty um, a desk job sure but I still move around a lot mm-hmm. uh, I prefer that I go to my team rather than the team comes to me okay I keep moving around in different meeting places right and so you're still getting your steps yes, done yes I yeah. still get my steps done yeah I get off work at around 6:45 mm. uh, the commute on the way back is is a little bit uh, longer mm. so I typically take 1 hour 45 minutes so I'm home by 8:30 okay as soon as i'm home a quick shower and i'm sitting for dinner mm. and um, dinner is a, a typical vegetarian fare mm. uh, we don't cook meat at home okay. so uh, food at home is typical. but you have non vegetarian yes oh, i okay. eat meat okay. and okay. fish so yeah. that way i think uh, dinner is over by 8:45 15 okay. 10 15 minutes okay. I'm, i'm a light eater okay. when it comes to dinner okay my heaviest meal is lunch okay and by 9 9 15 we are with family we are talking we mm. are either planning to watch something mm. on the tv or mm. we plan to read mm. or just catch up on what my kids have done in school mm. by 9 45 they are unwinding they are in bed mm. and um, i need to read before i sleep okay so by 10 15 10 30 latest after reading a bit is when i am off to bed okay and then tuesdays thursdays and saturdays right two out of the three days right. i do a run run Right. So again, it's six to seven, right. depending on the time. If Saturdays is an off day, right. it's usually a longer run. Right. Otherwise, it's that's that's how it so is. So six days a week, uh, it's a fairly regimented routine yeah. where either you're doing strength early in the morning after you wake up, or yeah. you're getting your run done, yeah. and the remaining part is pretty much templateized. Yes, right? absolutely. Right? And you're getting a heck of a lot of work done, right? Uh, I mean, things which people can't imagine, especially. uh work wise uh you know you run a huge organization yeah. uh considering that background um i would imagine time management might not come that easy to you but you, you find your ways and you find your hacks where you know that okay now it's settled you know uh 
um, what you want, and more importantly, you know what you don't want. Yeah. Uh, right. I mean, I remember uh, the other day when we were running together, you were very clearly telling me, you know, these are things I don't want. Yeah. And that's, uh, I don't know what it's a wisdom or it's a maturity with age. Like, I mean, uh, people people are struggling all the time to know I want this, I want this, but I've always. Uh, you know, being at awe with people when they are very clear to know what they don't want. Right. Right. So, I mean, was that an conscious effort on your part to kind of seek out that, look, these are the things which I, I'm not seeking, I don't want, or did it come kind of naturally because of that wear and tear of life which has come up? I think it's a, it's a bit of both. Uh, the natural wear and tear of life um, early on, because I became the MD of Puma India uh, very early. The at youngest. 27. Yeah. 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 Um, so the the fascination of becoming MD CEO, which people in their late 30s, early 40s always have, yeah. uh, is no longer there. Yeah. I'm very clear that that titles don't excite me. Mm. Number two, when it comes to wealth, um, I'm very inward looking. I know what is it that I want out of the wealth, physical wealth. Mm. The physical wealth is good enough as long as kids have the education that they want. Mm. Beyond that, it's just material pleasures. And yes, of course, I do want them. I'm not saying I don't. Sure. But I know exactly what I want. What I want. And to back it, I know my capability. Right. So I know the ability that I have to be able to gain how much ever I want. So that's pretty much a runner mindset. Yes. Like you want to run and half marathon. Exactly. You exactly know at what pace you need to run, Absolutely. how much you have to train for yourself. And that kind of spills down to life. Right. Yes. I mean, you know exactly what you want. Yeah. Uh, and what's your potential which we talk about what's your ability in in running and then you do a back engineering to say that okay what do i have to do to get there absolutely right so i mean a, a beautiful parallel to say that okay how fitness is kind of yeah. i mean the learnings what you got from fitness is applying in life and vice versa right absolutely and i think what i have also realized is that um, a lot of people play to work on i mean they try to improve their negatives hmm. I know at this age of 44, my negatives are not going to change significantly. Mm. But I know what my strengths are. Mm. And I actually amplify them. So that my negatives keep low. Mm. So that is the, the hack that I've got at work. Mm. Mm. I have a very good memory. Mm. I'm very good with numbers. Mm. So that is what I play on. Mm. And if you put me in a room of 10 people, mm. I will remain silent for 95% of the meeting. I will keep listening. Mm. And at the last five minutes, I will summarize everyone's points mm. and give my point. And people will be like, wow. How did you manage it? How did you manage it? <laughs> so you're not talking all through this. No. Yeah. And they will not believe that it's mm. everyone's something or the other from their points has come in. Sure. So they think it's a new point that I've added as a boss. Yeah. But none of them are unhappy because some part of their point has already been incorporated in this. Is that an ability or skill which you had to work on? or uh, I mean, how did that so come it up? It came because I was not from retail. When okay. I joined Puma, I did not have that background. Mm. So I had to, by default, keep quiet in the meeting to learn. Because you're an outsider. Because I was an outsider. Mm. I had hired people who were experts. Right. So I had to learn from them and I was their boss. So I could not say that, hey, listen, come sit with you me. You have nothing to me. pitch in because I exactly. mean, uh, you're not from the space. Exactly. Uh, but when you look at five, when you listen to five people, and that's what most people do not understand when they try to talk over each other in a meeting. Mm. What you need to understand is that if you listen, maybe by collating everyone's ideas, you can mm. come up with your own idea. Mm. So that's how that's how it became right, 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 a right, skill. Right, right, amazing. Yeah. So, um, so I don't know if this will put you on a spot. So, do you still run on Puma shoes? No. No. <laughs> I, even at Puma, I never ran in Puma shoes. Oh, really? So How does that work? In 2000 and between 2005 and 2011, mm. Puma never came with good running shoes. Yeah, I wanted to. I want to double click on your Puma thing. Yeah, right? yeah. So okay. So we tried really hard. Okay. And um, I remember I used to run with uh, Asics right. those days. Right. And um, it was tough. Right. It was tough to get one of those Puma shoes to run. Right. I do remember when they launched a, a new shoe, yeah. which now in the, this avatar is the Nitro today. Right. Nitro, yeah. Uh, but in the heydays, it was some, yeah. known as something else. I did use it. Okay. But uh, most of my races were in AC. So you're very cool that, uh, you know, um, even though uh, I've, I've seen and heard you saying that you're, you're absolutely uh, had a great time at Puma. So that belonging is there. But... Uh, when it's about performance, you want to get the best. So you probably Absolutely. are getting any other brand which gives Absolutely. you the performance. Awesome. Um, so I can see you are into uh, 
tech right i mean uh, wearables i think part of it i can see a ring on yes. your uh, thing i want to double click on that so so what's the relationship with uh, tech wearables uh, in your life like how do you use them what kind of metrics are you kind of uh, tracking in terms of your health so um, like i said i'm good with numbers mm. so for me data becomes very important the mm. more data i have mm. the more at peace i feel okay and the more i'm able to double click and assess my own progress mm. so for me the first uh, step was to let go of the regular watches okay. and get the apple watch okay i did have the garmin okay and i used to use the garmin i do have it still i mm. use the garmin for the runs, runs. but then i remember i realized that during the day apple watch software and the hardware was getting better and better sure so i just yeah. got one last year okay the uh, latest actually, apple watch April, yeah, not yeah. the latest one but this uh, year in okay, april okay, the series okay. 7 yeah yeah series 7 okay and uh, i felt it was fairly accurate okay uh, not precise mm. but fairly accurate yeah. so you can do do it for both you run exactly. and other words also mm. so for me it then became that how many minutes have i worked out how much am i standing how many flights have i climbed in the day wow and how many calories as per the apple watch mm. have i burned mm. so then it became a progress chart that i used to then see because it has mm. your history right right so that is how i i started analyzing mm. that data mm. in fact before the apple watch i had an excel file mm. where i used to measure my weight every day wow. when i was running the half marathon wow and i used to put the day the exercise or the run that i have done and mm. the weight at that day mm. and i would realize that the previous night if i have had dessert or mm. if i have had alcohol okay it, the weight would be very different oh wow yeah and, and this uh, is way before we had a glucose monitor yeah, or yeah, yeah, that's right? like the that. old school excel sheet that Absolutely. you know i slept at this time and yes. next day i went on the scale i see my weight has tipped up okay exactly Great. and and just to just to feel good i would weigh myself after exercise Okay so yeah I would I would also then try I never put any remarks but I would feel tough if I've had alcohol to run or to exercise okay the night would be difficult to sleep okay and for me sleep is extremely important right um and then when ultra human came out right. I have an insiad friend who is part of the team okay. he told me and I said no it's okay it seems too you know too intrusive right yeah, I mean, it's yeah, too it's, intrusive yeah. too much like it's not something like yeah. I don't really need to monitor yeah. my glucose yeah And then I remember putting my wife on lean science. Okay. Um there was a gentleman called Amit and uh, Sudarshan. Okay. Two founders who had started lean science. And uh, they started talking about uh, you know how you're getting your energy. So you got okay. your ketones, you got your protein, okay. you got your yeah. fats and your yeah. carbs. Yeah. And they started talking about micronutrients like yeah. your potassium, sodium, yeah. vitamins. Yeah. And I somehow got hooked on to that kind of science, and okay. then I went on to Peter Atia. I went on to wow. Huberman Lab. Wow! Wow! Um, and then I was waiting, and then that's when I told D that B D joined. Uh, yeah, this uh, Dharmendra. Ultra Human. Yeah, yeah Dharmendra yeah. joined yeah. Ultra Human. Yeah. And he told me you should try it. Okay. So I said, okay, why not? Yeah. So that's when I took it. Yeah. And it was predictable for me because I knew yeah. what I was. See, I have been doing IF for seven, eight years, six, okay. seven years now. Okay. This is intermittent, intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting. Correct. Yeah. So for me it was very obvious that during mm. exercise you will have a spike because your muscles are releasing right. uh glucose glycogen right. it's getting converted so you'll have a spike and then mm. when you come back mm. uh when you have a protein shake when you have mm. nuts mm. uh what is happening to the body when you have mm. black coffee what is mm. happening mm. and uh, then you know I started reading about glucose goddess mm. um Jessie okay. who's re- who's re- uh written a book called the glucose revolution okay so if you follow her on instagram mm. she has these small infographics okay which says that if you have a salad before a carb meal okay the spike will be less pre meal what Pre-meal, spikes your yeah, yeah exactly yeah, right and so what can you add more so that you don't have a absolutely. spike yeah see now in the factory setup i don't have i don't have that kind of an access, ability yeah, yeah, access yeah. to to have that but i know i'm aware of what mm. i'm eating mm. So that within two weeks I figured out, mm. and then I was waiting for the ring to come out. Mm. So next is to monitor the resting heart rate, monitor sleep, mm. and, and the see, heart rate variability. Yes, yeah. exactly, heart rate yeah, variability. Right. So this, this is a lot of sciencey and tech stuff coming from someone who's been a retail guy, yeah. right? A guy who opens stores, who is talking most of the time merchandising, who is talking about uh, marketing brand. Um, this is a lot of geeky stuff, uh, right? Um, So now, uh, and you spoke about uh, two very impressive podcasts, Peter uh, Peter Atia and uh, Huberman. I mean, must listen for people who want to understand human physiology, physiology uh, in depth. Uh, you know, uh, ha- are you now consciously kind of making an effort to kind of drift towards uh, this area of knowing? Okay, what can you? Because this is not natural for a lot yeah. of people, right? I mean, you have to, and these are stuff which is not been 
may be for unknown reason not taught in school right yeah. i mean we are taught at a very macro level about biology is right we are taught, taught about organs but this is more human performance yes. right we are talking about sleep yeah. uh, right uh, glucose right yeah. uh, does it come uh, to you as something where you have to make an effort now to say that okay how do i go find resources do you kind of you have some close folks who you kind of you know riff with uh, like this other stuff which we are talking about and second how do you find time right i mean your day is packed yeah. right I mean, when you were talking to me about the schedule i couldn't figure out a way where where are you kind of consuming all of that so how are you managing so i typically end up doing it in the commute okay okay so i That's have me. a long yeah. commute so yeah. i either listen to the podcast that's another great course, hack yes yeah, exactly yeah. Right. and uh, the other hack is to listen at multiple speed multiple speed But yeah of yeah. course with huberman and peter atia you, you can't, can't do that you, you literally can't most of yeah. it yeah 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 uh, so that is one the other is that uh, because again i have such a long commute i internalize a lot of things i am okay. alone in the car with the driver i have time to think okay so i start plotting that what is it that i want to incorporate in life mm. uh given the constraints that i have given that mm. i can't do anything at work mm. uh, it's easy to carry a bottle of vinegar and mm. have uh, you know spike it spike your water and have it 20 minutes before your meal brilliant so your glucose spike is less brilliant uh, or for example if you do want to have sugar but in in factory if they put a sweet in your plate just remove it you yeah. choose the sugar you want to have right 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 if you love ice creams then why should you have what they put right. in the plate yeah have some vegetables before that exactly. and then go for your dessert and then go yeah. for the dessert yeah so that is those are the kind of things and then um, you know the next is that i do also remember that if you have had a meal it's best to walk for 10 15 minutes mm. given that we have a factory set up and we have 60 acres of campus is very easy for me to walk out of the building perfect. and just take a 10 minute stroll and come back perfect so those are the things that very easily and right. and a lot of the times i take someone with me that listen okay. you want a 10 minute catch up let's walk great so you don't waste your time right and then you quickly do a catch up with the so person you, and come you back. get your meal you get a spike you immediately get that 10 minute walk yes. so that you can actually get it regulated right Absolutely. i mean so you're listening to all of this content and you're pretty much uh, making it in action yes. i mean it's just not like a passive one side consumption what you're doing right and that's um, that's very impressive because most of the time uh, i mean we live in a world today where there's overload of information yeah. right and often it just comes through you and it just kind of settles down right it's very hard and these are very small small hacks like Absolutely. you said i mean you get a dessert but okay to kind of counter that you have some veggies before that and yes. get to your dessert right exactly. and after having your dessert you get a spike just go for a 10 minute walk Absolutely. and these are very practical stuff which anyone can do and you're doing for all the reasons in a manufacturing setup in a factory uh and I, i and i really hope that guys who are there in in a much more uh you know controlled environment where they are in, sitting inside i mean that's what our most of the workplace is these are like uh, it sector uh you know you are in a much more controlled space that's something which almost everyone can do that so i think one of the things that people don't realize and i've seen it with people who are um, avers to exercising mm. people who are smokers yeah. people who are chain coffee drinkers and mm. tea drinkers mm. i think they just don't realize how the body gives up beyond a point yeah most people think that diabetes is genetic yeah they don't understand it's a lifestyle disease it is yeah. and what does lifestyle disease mean mm. and how you can actually reverse it even if you've had diabetes yeah i have seen people my wife's father yeah. suffer because of diabetes So why should anyone go through it when sure. it's in your hands? Absolutely. And I think for me it's Im- important to tell people that boss listen if you don't do this you are in for trouble. Yeah. And somehow people in their 30s don't realize they think that anything I put in my body will get processed. Yeah, they're just taking for granted, right? Exactly. They haven't seen the downside yet. Absolutely. Yeah. In the in, in your youth everything is yeah, a given, yeah, right? Yeah, that right, life right. is there in right, front of me right. I can do whatever right. I feel invincible which yeah. is great. Right. um and it's exactly like your finances right like right, health absolutely. is exactly like finances yeah, it's right. too late when people realize absolutely. oh i should have saved oh i should have focused on health yes i think that's uh, absolutely i mean a very good point i mean yesterday uh, i was speaking to another guest and we were doing this podcast recording and he came up with this very good analogy that it's about conserving your energy yeah. right i mean you know this much is of the energy bank you've got you try to take it for granted and you go for a burnout you are done you yes. have nothing left when you are at your prime i mean post 30 mid 30s 40s so you have to have that practical clarity that okay how much you want to consume in the analogy what's about wealth yeah. you have to have a very good uh, understanding that okay this is what i have got 
right so i have to be very mindful and very careful and perhaps sometimes very selfish to also that how much do i spend now yeah how much do i actually conserve so that i can utilize it in the future absolutely and that that brings me to an interesting thing that we spoke about uh, when we were running and i was told this by a friend he introduced me to the time billion concept yeah yeah and yeah i wanted to also read it yeah i wanted you to tell you that it yeah. links on to your other guests yeah. uh, conserving energy yeah, right, right. If your average lifespan is 80, yeah. after 37 and a half years of age, you are no longer a time billionaire. You don't have billion seconds to live. Exactly. So, are you going to sacrifice your billion seconds yeah. to chase money? Yeah. What will you do with the money yeah. if your energy is getting depleted? Real time, your time right. is not going to come back. Right. So that is very very important for people to realize that you are running behind what and how much and how far and how fast you want to run. Yeah. So exactly ties back to conserving energy. Yeah. And that's entropy, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Energy can neither be converted nor yeah. destroyed. It yeah. only gets sorry, can never be created nor destroyed. It right. only gets converted. Right. right. So yeah, I think it's it's uh, science uh, yeah, it's, it's life. Good. Yeah, it's beautiful I mean, because uh, uh, and I'm sure people who are listening and watching would actually have this back to back as a great tool to say and something what we discussed in the uh, in the previous uh, uh, recording was episode was that same concept that what you do after age 30 determines what your health would be at the age of 60 and that's pretty much exactly what you just said right and this is coming from two guys who are at the pinnacle of high performance when it comes to professional work and they've seen enough to reach that level and they've seen both ups and downs yeah. and uh, and it just can't get more practical i mean these are not fitness gurus yeah, these are absolutely. not scientists but someone who actually done it for themselves and they figured it out right So I also believe, and 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 one thing you will see probably common is that um, over time, one thing that I relate wisdom to is that you become more inward looking. Yeah. Um, if you start living with internal validation rather than external, then you've achieved a certain kind of peace with yourself. Mm. And uh, I think that is what uh, every guest. probably that you would meet sure. who's come to that realization yeah yeah and for me it's extremely important that i am comfortable with what i am doing what i am saying what i am wearing what i am eating rather than what someone else thinks of me so i don't have to ask you again now what's your philosophy of life is because this is what your philosophy exactly. of life is right Absolutely. it's 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 intrinsic, right? intrinsic. you're not looking at Uh, uh, what the external validation or external yes. uh, uh, what about the metrics or factors are right so those like i said i have got them and i'm internally now satisfied Brilliant. with what i have achieved early on in life and Brilliant. i think i tell people that if you work hard you will achieve those yeah and there is no end to chasing it it's very mm. difficult so today if i say that i will make 1 crore mm. and i say that i will retire at 1 crore mm. i know 99.9% of the people when they reach 1 crore they will say now i'll make 10 crores Sure. When they reach ten crores, no, now I'll go to fifty. Yeah, it's a vicious cycle, right? Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. you need to know what that goal is and don't change the goalpost. Interesting. It can be a thousand crores. That's mm. okay. Yeah. But don't when you hit it. But yeah. when you hit it, yeah, that's a pass. Yeah, that's it. Don't say I want ten thousand crores now. Right, right. You right. cannot change the goalpost because then it's a never-ending cycle. Right. But isn't it? Uh, I would imagine. I mean, the times where we live today, when we go back to that original piece, right? You don't know. you always are striving to figure out what you want i mean there's something what you want but you don't know what you don't want right isn't it it does certainly doesn't come out that very easy on people right you want to have yeah. to work on that to understand that okay it's time to pause and again uh, going back uh, something which we probably will keep doing this in this conversation is there under running right i mean when you're injured you want to take a pause you can't kind of add more stress on to that exactly. and say okay no i want to go another training cycle and i want to hit more but boy you are injured right so what you have to do is you have to go back you want to figure out what your damage is you have to replenish it and you have to take a pause and that's pretty much what uh, you know life is all about absolutely and life is exactly that marathon it's not a sprint yeah you are racing yourself you are not racing with usain bolt next to you right it's not about 10 seconds or 9.98 right it's about bettering yourself Right. I don't care what Dilip next to me is running. He might right. be a sub three, but right. I'm okay running four and a half or five, and then True. getting better at it. Right. And I know I my job or my goal is to my goal. It's yeah. not his goal on me or yeah. my goal on him. Yeah. People forget about that. Yeah. And they start measuring themselves yeah. with someone else's yardstick. Yeah. 
and that can be because of peer pressure that can be because of societal because of family right and you need to be able to then shut that and right. become intrinsic right there is no end to getting a bigger car bigger plane bigger boat yeah, there's yeah, no end absolutely yeah i mean you till a point you can say this is the biggest car but now you have tesla now your ev where all exactly. is in good right reminds me of a very beautiful um, uh thing which i heard uh, uh, of course you know eliot kipchoge who you know recently at berlin marathon when a yeah. journalist asked him before the race like um, uh, would you be uh, what about your competition right uh, would you go with their pace uh, and he said that i'm going to race i'm going to do my race right if someone wants to join me they are welcome yeah. right but i'm not going to look around what others are doing exactly. i'm just going to do my own race and the question was what, what are you chasing right uh, of course maybe he might have some thought in mind but he put it out saying that i'm going to do a beautiful race absolutely and beautiful could mean anything, anything. to for different people right for some That's it could lovely. be world record for some it could be a course record but exactly. for him it's a beautiful race absolutely. so if people want to join him they are welcome yeah he is very clear he is going to do a beautiful race and he is going to exactly. enjoy it whatever outcome comes he'll take it he'll take it absolutely right? but we all know for the record for the record nerds he's only getting better better at it right yeah. he i mean it's not like he's going downward right yes. he's with age he's getting better, better which is it. i mean very phenomenal, ha- phenomenal right yeah. i mean an endurance sport some guy i think he's probably inching closer to 40 yes hitting that is and uh, unthinkable right yeah, absolutely terrific terrific so um what's your relationship with food let's talk about it. i mean you said you are uh, at home you are uh, eating veg but you yeah. eat non veg so how are you looking food at i mean food is a means for you to kind of put something into you or is it a means for you to uh, recover how are you looking uh, food in terms of um, a tool so i think um, it, it's a bit of both when i say recover it's not mostly for the body it's for the mind okay i am a big foodie Okay. I love experimenting with food. Okay. And when I'm at home I'm vegetarian. Mm. But I will always want to satisfy my palate mm. before my body. Mm. And uh, mornings is IF. Most of the time it's black coffee mm. or a protein shake mm. and some nuts. Mm. My first solid food intake is post 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Okay. 12:31. Okay. either it will be fruit okay which may or may not be wrong okay um and then at 2 o'clock is when i have my lunch okay lunch this is, is because you're doing that if uh, window yes exactly mm. uh lunch is typically one chapati mm. <clears throat> two vegetables mm. one bowl of dal mm. one curd mm. and some salad mm. <coughs> excuse me that's typical office lunch mm. it's made fresh mm. and we eat that mm-hmm. and then um Mm. again at around 5 5:30 mm. a snack typically it will be peanuts and um, okay. chana okay so try to keep it to slightly healthier versions sure. of mm. the snack mm. and like i said when i come home is dinner mm. dinner typically is vegetarian fare okay uh, i restrict the carbs that i have okay i try to amp up on the veggies mm-hmm. so for example if you've made something um, say like pav bhaji okay i will have more bhaji okay and i'll have half a pav Okay. And I like that. Okay. I've been like that from childhood. Okay. I used to have only two chapatis. Mm. So for me to go from 2 to 1 was Is not a big deal. Is it the carb deal. conscious on you saying no, that no, you don't no. want bread? Oh, okay. okay. I never really liked bread as much as I like the veggies. Okay. From before. Okay. If it's biryani then I will try and have a consciously less amount of biryani. I will okay. ask him to put more veggies on mine. Okay. Wow. If it's a burger That's I'll a good have it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. I keep I always ask him to make veggies separately. Okay. and then i'll put veggies on top of the rice wow it's already mixed in but the veggies with the masala on top right. of it again right right so you are having your carb you are also having your meat exactly. but you are also trying to kind of hedge uh, whatever is imbalance in the meal by having that extra veggies absolutely right that's amazing and right. then you know i like i said uh, apple cider vinegar before lunch yeah. right so those kind of things i try and experiment with and right, i think right. it works i i think what works for me i don't change right, right. unless i read about it right. and someone tells me that this is better so so uh, so clearly all the podcast consumption is coming handy right? yes, i mean you're you're putting in juice yes. and you're figuring it and people might i would imagine people on the other side of the table where you ordered a chicken biryani but you're having extra veggies on top who yeah. on the planet would do that right but they don't know how we are trying to balance exactly. uh, the stuff right right so i would Im- so i would assume now i mean i'm making a guess that um, so you're not kind of following a very regimented nut i mean you said you're intermittent fasting but you're not following a nutritioning nutritionist no, program no, or anything you don't have a nut 
nutritionist yeah. telling you eat this or eat that no. it's pretty much your controlled way yeah. Yeah, you read you know what works for you Correct. i would imagine is sometimes if things are not working for you probably will discard and you kind of figure out what's next for you so right? what i've realized is that the more you see food being cooked mm. the better it is okay in terms of nutritional value mm. because the factory canteen is right there i mm. know it's fresh food mm. okay so it's like home cooked food mm. similarly at home when i get there the cook is there he's mm. cooking he's mm. there and he's making so i know the kind of nutrition that it is giving me mm. rather than ordering something from outside oh okay. okay so for me that itself is the first level yeah and because i work 6 days mm. all 12 meals are home cooked mm. more or less mm. and then sundays is when i binge mm. i will do whatever kids want i will mm. do whatever the wife wants i will okay. go out with friends if they yeah. want and there also so if i go to for example a beer club mm. i will switch to a whiskey on the rocks and i will stick to one okay and i will have a lot of meat starters okay and i'll then i'll avoid the entire main course these are the hacks people can ever get coming from a guy who is doing for themselves <laughs> right? he's having his alcohols he's having his desserts he's having his biryani but is still healthy he's running 42 kilometers yes. just for fun is doing it <laughs> right i mean you don't have to go to a great expert to figure it out what it, i mean it's simple yeah right i mean these are the small experiences people can get it done and Absolutely. live a healthy and happy life so i think one thing to add to this is that people forget that you need to work 6 days a week right yeah you have to get up and you have to go yeah. even if you're not feeling go for a walk yeah don't skip it if you skip it and you still eat mm. then it's a disaster yeah 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 <laughs> Terrific. So, okay. So, let's dial back uh, a bit of your professional life. I mean, you we touched upon. You were the youngest uh, MD in India at the age of twenty-seven, I That's think, right. right? And that also with a large, multi-global corporation, right? Um, you were asked to come and set up uh, the Puma business in India. Uh, have you met uh, Usain Bolt? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. What was the first thing you asked him when you met him? <laughs> I don't remember that, but. Um... Oh yeah, I remember that. Do you play cricket? Because I remember he, yeah, yeah, he's a uh, Jamaican. He, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I think we had a small, small cricket, uh, cricket kind of a match where right. uh, Yuvraj Singh had also come. Wow. Yeah. So he loves playing cricket, golf, and football, all right. three. Right, right. Yeah. So, uh, you know, Rajiv, you set up Puma in India at a time where uh, uh, you know we didn't have that uh, big sporting culture, anything apart from cricket. Like, we've been a cricket nation uh, throughout along. our life, right? So. and you somehow chose cricket or oh sorry you chose running to be a flagship um, uh, sport right uh, in puma right uh, wasn't that a, i mean what made you choose running as a which is not a mainstream sport in okay. india i mean wasn't that a big risk i mean how did it pan out like also because is that because you got into running like what was the dynamics you said that, okay let's get into running no i think um what had happened is that 2005 when we launched puma it was very clear that the giants were there there was adi reebok nike mm. uh, already there and they had been in india for a while so we said that let's not go where they are going yeah. let's okay. go in a different direction and we launched lifestyle shoes so mm. the formula 1 shoes the okay. ferrari shoes became okay. a big rage mm. there were red shoes yellow shoes mm. and we went the lifestyle route but then as puma globally started focusing more on running mm. we said that there is a way to create a niche for ourselves and let's go towards social runners okay people who have not gotten out of their homes not mm. gotten up from their couches mm. let's get them to run mm. and that's where we met runners for life and mm. they said that you know let's do a1 and a2 said that mm. let's do uh, for those who don't know arvind one arvind one and with two yeah um, mm. so they both said that let's do urban stampede and we mm. need a sponsor mm. and this is a great tool to get people to run Say a half marathon mm. by each of them running say about five point one five point five kilometers. Mm. I said that's wonderful. Let's do a relay race, mm. and that's how Puma came on board as a title sponsor for mm. Urban Stampede. Mm. And we said that we will devise plans for people from zero to five k. Wow, that's mm. the easiest. Mm. And five k is good enough. You're running with three of your other people. Mm. You're in a relay. Mm. it's a corporate or even you can come on board mm. and i think that's we thought was the right way to get people hooked to running mm. Mm. and from 5k i'm sure a lot of people went to 10 to 21 and then mm. to 42 yeah and i think i remember uh, that was the time you also came up with this school of speed yes, project right absolutely. right i mean that was for me that was an absolutely um, outside yeah. box thinking right i mean and uh, uh, back then i mean i was in my early teens i would imagine that why would a company want uh, to make school kids run 
right? And, and again, I, I, things have changed now, but uh, running was also not a sport which was celebrated in a school, Absolutely. right? It was mostly PT and cricket and soccer, uh, football, yeah. right? So, so what was that? What I want to understand the thinking process was it because you were a runner. You are biased and you are kind of looking through a lens where you say, you know, this would go. Running would be a big deal because I am into the sport. Or you could kind of layer it with your business acumen to say that, no, there is a potential. There is a market and, you know, probably we should be the guys who should be hitting on it. So it, it, it what I realized early on is the benefits of running. Mm. And um, with the benefits of running, I said that India has so much potential. Mm. And most of it is getting wasted because people are unhealthy. And mm. people are not focusing on sport. Everything mm. is focused towards studies. Mm. And sport takes a backseat suddenly. Mm. You do some kind of sport in school. Mm. You do, then get into the grind of the engineering colleges, the, the yeah, MBBS. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. The, Competitive and the typical, exams. Yeah. And that's where it, everything ends. There mm. is not a single college mm. that has sporting campuses yeah. that you can write home about. Yeah. No, track and and, no tracks. Nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Right? No football fields. Yeah. No basketball mm. courts. And even if they are, they are dilapidated. Yeah. No one takes care of them. Yeah, no yeah. one wants yeah, to play. Yeah. Everyone is out there trying to win the rat race. So we thought that you have to make a change at the grassroots level. Okay. And if you look at the grassroots level, one is running is the easiest because mm. there's no equipment. When we looked at football, we said that we have a lot of potential in the Northeast. Mm. Mm. But infrastructure is missing. Mm. So one of the things we said is that we will adopt mm. grounds. Mm. Ground is already there. Mm. We will fence it. Mm. We will create changing rooms mm. and we'll create bathrooms. Mm. That's all people need. So you're building essentially the infrastructure. Exactly. Mm. So we did it for a couple of grounds in the mm. Northeast and mm. we said we will find talent. Okay. And we'll promote talent as Puma. Okay. Because if you are able to go to the grassroots, mm. then you can nurture talent mm. and you can spend some time, effort, money mm. bringing them up. Mm. That was the thought behind it. Mm. The idea was if India can play for 10 minutes a day, yeah. that'll change the future of the country. It's not about boy, girl, man, woman. It's India can play for 10 minutes a day. Mm. You watch 35, 40, 50, 60 minutes of TV. Mm. No one plays. Play. Just go out and play, play something. something. Yeah. That'll change the future of the com country. Yeah. Um, so I want to uh, change gears and talk about the entrepreneurial gear because it's very fascinating for me to say that uh, you having spent time... Uh, you know, scaling and growing a large brand, a sporting brand, and then you kind of moved in, which we'll talk about. But I want to take a pause and we spoke about your um, your running credentials, right? So uh, I know you're not training right now, but imagine you have to train right now, 10K, half marathon, you can pick a distance. And you want to call out a competition to, let's say, it could be another corporate executive or uh, any startup founder, right? Um, who do you want to challenge to say that, look, dude, I am doing a 10K run, I want to come out... Uh, Pretty much same like what you did in your Puma days and a boss challenge. So I want you to call out someone and you can say, look, uh, this is my the guy I want to challenge if I had to go out, train a 10K or a half marathon today. Oh, that's an interesting one. Um, I think I would call out uh, Vinita's husband, Mukherjee of Sugar Kaushik? Cosmetics. Okay, yes, Kaushik, Kaushik Mukherjee? Okay, interesting. Yeah. Okay, uh, yeah. yeah. I think he also is into running, yes, but I'm exactly. not sure what his uh, yeah, current yeah. system is. So, interesting. so let's do a half marathon. Half marathon? Yeah. All right, so Kaushik, if you're listening and watching, <laughs> uh, message uh, Rajiv now, uh, sign up for a race and you guys should probably uh, sign up um, a training method race, and exactly. figure it out what it is. Right, Absolutely. awesome. And um, uh, in your network of... Uh, corporate executives, startup founders, whom do you find to be the most fittest? Hmm, that's... Uh... Yeah, you can call it anyone. I mean, in your own definition, like it doesn't need to mean that you yeah, have a chiseled yeah, yeah, body. Yeah, yeah. So I think... Um, ah, that's tough. No one? No one comes to mind? No one. I mean, if you look at the retail landscape... Yeah. Uh, you look at Puma, you look at Nike, you look at Addy, yeah. look at Under Armour. Yeah, no one is. No one. You yeah. look at Benetton, yeah. Amisha from uh, Levi's. Oh, okay. She's nice. fit. Terrific, yes, Amisha. Yes, definitely. Amisha is fit. Probably, yeah. So She's the only one. Uh, also means that LinkedIn doesn't have enough of people posting. Absolutely. Had it been like Instagram, we probably buy no that who's more yeah, fit. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Terrific. All right. So, um, DeFi happened, right? Yes. Uh, uh, DeFi was your entrepreneurial venture uh, after many years of doing... Uh, what you were doing really good at in the retail space, you took a plunge and you decided you should, you know, get your hands dirty and you chose, so first of all, what is DFY? What does that mean? So it was a play on defy, DFY. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So okay. we said that we'll defy Interesting. the status quo. Why okay. should 
running shoes or sport shoes be expensive okay, okay. why can't you get good technology shoes right which are not expensive yeah. and make good technology accessible to the masses to everyone. that yeah. was the premise of right. and building a india grown brand exactly. right 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 so of course i was a risk taker my partner is a risk taker both, right. both of us are still risk takers and that's right. that's in our dna right. we said we should do that right and when you go into business typically early on if you get money there mm. is someone else to do give you a reality check because mm. they have put in their money mm. because we went in with our own money mm. there was no reality check and you mm. go in there was no filter hubris. yeah mm. there was no filter mm. you go in with your own hubris and mm. your family will always encourage you at least till they don't know the quantum of money that you've lost mm. so i think that's what happened and we made mistakes which mm. we realized later on mm. thank god we realized them early enough mm. before burning too much of money mm. had we raised money early mm. someone else would have told us earlier there were yeah. external stakeholders exactly. come with their own validation yeah exactly. right right so i think that's that's what defi happened and the reason why defi collapsed is that we put too much money in inventory and okay. retail stores okay we did not have enough money for marketing okay we had the right ingredients we okay. still believe that the brand can exist mm. an indian brand can mm. exist mm. but we put too much of money in retail and in uh, inventory of the shoes mm. similarly after not taking money from someone else mm. we burnt our own money so when mm. you have limited amount of money mm. you should always have that in your mind that this is how much i will spend and the rest i will take from someone else that's a risk takers mentality right let's go all in yes exactly right, right no but i want to set a context defy was essentially a company you and your partner set out to create an active lifestyle sports brand company and you coming from that background of having run right uh, uh when you look back in retrospect right uh, clearly like you said i mean you guys went in all in you pulled in your own money was that being a runner being an active guy somehow edged you to say ki no you know this would work because i am the guy who is consuming a lot of such products i have done this in the past yeah uh, and what a great feeling if my own brand would just go and do it and there is no one better than me because i have seen it at a very you know 100 10000 feet level that this works right so that gut feeling did you think that what gave you that over stride or you know or had you not been a runner you probably won't have done that i think yeah you you right in hindsight what we did was a little bit of research with known people we could have done a lot more formalized research and you could have dug deeper into the kind of price points that you will sell mm. um and we never really compared competition right suddenly mm. there was an influx from decathlon mm. so decathlon squeezed us from the bottom okay by lowering prices yeah, yeah, yeah. and selling direct to the consumer mm. and at the same time the big brands puma adi reebok nike started dropping their prices during sale seasons okay and indians are still very western looking saying that i want to have a brand Mm. I want to wear something which I am known for mm. from the outside. Mm. So I don't know if I. Mm. I would rather spend four thousand rupees on Puma mm. or a Nike because the brand awareness is there. Yeah, then yeah. spend three thousand mm. rupees on mm. Defy. Mm. So I think the brand building was more important, okay. which we didn't have any more money left. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Terrific. Um, uh, you know, you have. Uh, uh, so in your career, you have spent a ton of time uh, doing a lot of marketing campaigns. Sat with Sachin Tendulkar. Uh, Usain Bolt, a lot of Bollywood stars. Does it get intimidated sometimes? I mean, when you just walk into them, make them say, "Like, how do you?" I mean, I'm just curious. How do you crack it? Like, I mean, what <laughs> what joke do you pass? How do you kind of warm them up to say that? I mean, Sachin Tendulkar is sitting next to you, right? I mean, yeah. what what do you tell him? Like, how do you prep yourself? <laughs> so I think uh, to give them credit, uh, they've been in those kind of situations where they make the other person feel comfortable. Oh, okay. They know that a senior executive is coming or someone okay. from the company okay. is coming, okay. and they become very na- they are very natural. But they've been doing this. Yeah. They've been doing it. Yeah. So you really don't need to, and okay. and I think it's it's funny, but I'm not a cricket fan at all. Oh wow. At all, so okay. I was not. Is it because enamored. after the running, or you've no, never I've been? No, I've never been. Oh, okay. Because so, I, I now know a lot of runners say they they don't watch cricket, including me. Correct. Uh, which I don't know if people will start um, trolling us now, but uh, <laughs> yeah, but that's good to. But know. even before, yeah. So I do remember that I had to go to Sachin's house in Bombay. Okay. Uh, we were designing uh, something with him in terms of the apparel range. Yeah. And I had to do a wardrobe audit, so I told him. that i will come and you need to show me what you like what colors what brands and you can bring some shirts t-shirts out when i reached um the, the, he had everything lined up and mm. i was in his living room in his house and 
he showed me we had a discussion it was 15 20 minutes mm. and then i was about to leave i said thank you very much he said no no without having poha how can you go <laughs> he's a maharashtrian yeah. he's a great host yeah. a great gentleman i said okay so i'll wait and of course it took some time and yeah. he started talking about a match and he's like there was this spinner you know rajesh chauhan right <laughs> and you're like which rajesh chauhan <laughs> no clue I have no clue. And yeah. he's giving me stories which others would have loved to listen. Of course, on the the cricket nerds the, would love yeah, to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And he's saying this happened, and I hit my ear, and this bone broke. You see this? This has happened, and then Rajesh went this way, and he fell, and the full. I mean, half an hour, and the poha came. I finished my poha. He's not even had his poha, and he's still on. <laughs> And it took an hour. Did and you tell him that you were not a cricket guy? No, no, no. I, 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 I did tell him that he would have taken the poha back. The <laughs> <laughs> so poha is not for you. <laughs> yeah, but I think he's he's uh, he was very sweet, and I think awesome. uh, I still remember. It's 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 exactly like that with anyone. Right, right, right. I remember Ranveer Singh also when we had called him for one of the Puma things. He makes you feel very comfortable. Terrific. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, these. So guys essentially, uh, so, so so you know for. Layman for people, uh, you know, who don't have that access to sit next to these uh, celebrated people, there's always then you know they have their own aura, right? They come with a certain vibe, and you don't know how to react, right? So it comes very naturally. So like, what does someone say, right? I mean, uh, you know, when you're sitting next to a big guy, you can't you can't crack a joke, but very good chances that it might be a PJ, yeah. right? And the guy might give a very bad reaction, like you know what what a guy is, right? So. and that also comes with a certain experience right i mean that also has to kind of build into your persona to kind of figure it out like when to talk when not to talk and whom to give that respect right and that comes with a certain experience what has happened in with you yeah and i think what you realize is that they are stars because they love themselves mm. Mm. you can't be a star if you mm. do not love yourself yeah and you don't yeah. like the limelight right so by default you give them the place yeah. you give them the space you give them the mic yeah. you let them lead the conversation Yeah. Unless there is something that you really need to say, hmm. you just let them lead and you just respond. Right, right, right. Um and then you learn as right. you get along. I do remember that Puma was bought in 2008 hmm. by a French conglomerate. Hmm. Uh the same company that owns the Gucci group, Gucci, it's yeah, a luxury yeah, yeah. brand. And the chairman, mm-hmm. he Salma Hayek's husband, mm. Francois Ori Pino, okay. he came down to India. Mm. And uh I met him in the Imperial Hotel in New Delhi for mm. breakfast. Mm. And the first question is how was your flight? What time did you land? Did immigration? And then his PR lady said we came by charter. That's when you realize that oh, oh, yeah. he's at a level where he can of afford to fly on his own. He's a multi billionaire. Exactly. He's not going to stand in a line get through the immigration exactly. check. <laughs> Probably that's the same thing what your team should have told you that this guy is coming to the charter. <laughs> So that's when you then learn like okay <laughs> yeah, yeah. don't correct, open correct. your mouth have your preparation done <laughs> yeah yeah makes sense yeah so um so i want to read out this line that's that's uh, that's there on your linkedin profile it says you're an avid runner a chef at heart and an adventure junkie by nature most of the people and you said you're 44 right most of the people when they hit 30 40s life for them is you know pretty much around work home work home for people like us in uh, bangalore it's traffic also yeah. right uh, what is this importance uh, in your life about um, interests outside i mean these are very diverse yeah. like being a chef uh, right and this is not like a youtube chef like you're not no. doing things to upload videos on youtube yeah. right being an adventure junkie right uh, what's the importance of such interest in your life and how does it help you kind of build that semblance of balance in who you are today so i think like i said i'm a big foodie i love mm. experiments in fact yesterday with my mom we had made chole wow and chole pind pind chole pindi chole okay right? yeah. so typically people ask mm. that do you get the chana black or how do you make it black that has been something like yeah. a mystery for me for a long figure, finally i figured out how to do that right correct yeah. so people put tea leaves yeah tea leaves yeah, but, but it doesn't come out as black oh yeah yeah so the other hack is to add dried amla wow along with the tea leaves wow this okay. is an md of a public listed company telling how to get the perfect color grading to your pindi chole <laughs> exactly cool and three times in yeah. the last one month the yeah. cook has made it and he has ruined it and i can tell how what he has done wow. not yesterday but previous time he had actually roasted the anar dana okay yeah and that you have to give so that flavor huh? yes uh, that gives the tang tang yeah, yeah right but he put it too early so it burnt yeah so the whole chole had the burnt flavor yeah so i asked him when did you put the anar dana the question was not what is wrong mm. i called him and i said when did you put it 
He's like with the rest of the masala it's at the beginning. <laughs> so he said, I said, no, you do not put it at the beginning. You put it at the end yeah. just so that it is warm and it doesn't burn. So yes, chef at heart because food is extremely important for me. And I'm also a chemical engineer. Yeah. So food and cooking is like a science. Yeah, that's a science. This is a exactly. scientific guy talking about okay. the timing, Absolutely. you know, how much it has to be roasted. Yes. So this is not someone who just watches um, cringe videos on Instagram and yeah. say that this is what it is, right? Yeah. I mean, this is coming... Uh, Correct. from within inside right absolutely right right so for food is extremely important when i travel my entire itinerary is centered around food places mm. street and restaurants mm. um so that's food mm. adventure because i'm a risk taker mm. and um, i love uh, sport mm. in any form mm. so for me scuba diving is a sport mm. flying is a pursuit that is a sport mm. um and hence, for me, that is important. And I, I will go deep into it. So I'm three levels of scuba diving certified. The fourth mm. level would be dive master, mm. for which I don't have the time yet. Mm. But so that's, that's, and I do have to remove time to be able to constantly pursue it. So why once it, a year. Why, why is that important? I mean, because it doing... gives me, so I'll tell you, when I go to scuba diving, I go to the Andamans. Okay. And that's the only place mm. where Airtel doesn't work properly. Okay. Yeah. So when I'm there, I'm cut off. Okay. I'm literally cut off unless I have Wi-Fi. Mm. And for the last, except for last year and the year before that because of the pandemic, pandemic. Mm. earlier when I would go, I would go alone and meet people. So it would be very fascinating to meet people who would never ask you what you do. Mm. And I was... They beyond, don't know who you are, yeah, what exactly, your identity is. Yeah. Exactly. And yeah. you're only talking about diving. You're mm. only talking about the sport, which is mm. common. And when you finish everything, then you suddenly realize when you go back and connect with the person that, oh, this guy was this, this guy did this. So for me, that's fascinating. That's mm. that's like really unwinding where mm. I'm not connected to anything. Mm. And I'm there with the mm. sport, with mm. myself, mm. underwater, completely mm. knowing what I am. Because again, mm. that's physics, that's science. Yeah. That's your body. Mm. You cannot risk anything there. Yeah. yeah. Same with flying. Right. When I'm up there, there is no signal. Yeah, you're flying on your own. Mm. You do not. You cannot make a mistake. It's your life in your own hands. Same with diving. A common word which kept on coming in this conversation was a risk, yeah. right? And you have said it earlier that you know if you take risk in personal life, it will help you in your professional life. Scuba diving, flying, too much. I mean, this beyond a calculation. What can go wrong, right? I mean, I have to ask you: How do you hedge that risk when you have a family at home, kids, young kids, wife, right? I mean. What what is that in the mind? You're saying no. I mean, you have to eventually you have to go back. I mean, when you are getting up, uh, you know, trying to dive or going to the air base to go, go into your flying, what's in your mind? I mean, are you thinking about these people who are there? Uh, Absolutely. How, how 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 are you hedging your risk? Constantly. So again, it comes to discipline and ability. Hmm. I know exactly how much I can push. Or is it because you know again your exactly. what your ability is? Exactly. Hmm. I know that this is the science. Hmm. This is how much you can push yourself. Hmm. And this is what the coach or the, mm. or the you know, your air pilot mm. tells you mm. uh, how much to push or the master who's diving so It's very with calculated. You. It's mm. extremely calculated. It's data in your mm. own hands. Mm. So it's important for you to follow that mm. and be disciplined about it. Mm. And hence, I know how much. And of course, there will be small, like you have niggles in running. Yeah, you will yeah. have certain amount certain, of right, right elements around. and mm. you prepare yourself for that. Mm. When you train, whether you're flying, whether you're diving, mm. the training is for that. You mm. step after step when you get your licenses, mm. you progress and you keep going through different levels of sort of mishaps mm. and you train for that. Um, so why, by the way, yeah. that is, I don't have life insurance. Wow, man. Because don't tell me two, that. Because <laughs> these two sports yeah. do not. And now you're putting it in public where yes, now yes. for sure no insurance company is coming to sign you off. I will never have. I never <laughs> had and I will never have. Wow. For me, life insurance is a drain on your finances. Wow. What is life insurance for? To provide for your family. If you have provided enough liquidity and assets for your family, life insurance is not worth it. Wow. Now, now that should shut a uh, lot of uh, insurance companies or probably get their market cap down <laughs> because that's something straight from it, right? Terrific. So, um, so while researching, while trying to know more about you, I dug deep um, um, and I chanced upon this YouTube channel, um, which is apparently run by you on your name. And I saw this interesting uh, vlogs, yeah. uh, 12 days of vlogs with your son Prithvi and yeah. daughter Ishika. 
uh, uh, where uh, it was titled uh, Prish Magic. Yeah. Prish Magic, right? Uh, yeah. uh, and I got like, what is it about, right? So these are 12 days. I want you to tell like, what is, what was that? And why why did you decide to put it out? I mean, what was the thinking when, when the family sat and said, okay, we're going to put this. I, I would imagine that was happening during the pandemic. During the pandemic, right. exactly. Right. So I think one was, of course, to keep them engaged. Mm. The second was... Um, for them to understand uh, what their own abilities are. And this mm. is all there. They just told me, you come, you sit here, you record it. Mm. They never told me they wanted it on YouTube. Mm. And then they said, no, we want it on YouTube. And mm. I said, why? They're like, no, no, no. We want it so that we can send it to whoever we want. Mm. And I think it was only to make sure that they understand the whole ecosystem of how mm. it works. Mm. And I don't discourage them from taking experiment, from, from doing anything uh, as long as it's a it's a controlled experiment mm. where i know what are, what they are it's getting controlled. into yeah, yeah. yeah yeah and i think that's that's what i encourage them is to yeah. discover things right and uh, this whole prish magic thing they they did it on their own mm. and i think it was a good learning for both of them yeah. one is to get to know each other each as other. well yeah. and at the same time to have fun no i found it very fascinating the simple fact that there was a consistency yeah. it's not like one time like most of the yeah. time the kids will come and say look i did something yeah for me, it felt like a very well scripted ability where Prithvi comes, he looks into the camera, yeah. he starts with an intro, uh, a couple of episodes later, Ishika comes, uh, there is an ending to it and there was a consistency, it's not a one, it, there was 12, yeah. consistently it was, way. I'm sure there would be a schedule to it, right? Uh, 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 I mean, that kind of makes me like parenting, right? Uh, uh, is that something which... Over the years now, when you have two kids, growing kids, something uh, came up to you naturally, you saw your own parents, you figured out what is right or wrong, or you had your own learning, your lessons, and realized something is wrong, something is right, and you started working on it. How did it, uh, how do you take parenting as a So topic? I think it's it's uh, what I learned from my parents. I think mm. what I've seen them do. Mm. Uh, for me, my mom has sacrificed for my brother and me. She mm. has sacrificed a career, and she's been at home, okay. and she's been always there for us uh, from a nurturing and caregiver perspective even teaching us we okay. never had tuitions okay my dad was always out there earning the bread and uh, making sure that we had what we needed to to probably have fun lead a good life good enough life mm. and i think that that came in that i mm. have to do what i have to do for my kids mm. at the same time one thing that i missed was that none of Typical Gujaratis will never read books. Oh, is it? <laughs> Gujaratis okay. don't read other but they can, economic times. But they can run a bookstore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sapna book house. Yeah, Sapna book house. Yeah, <laughs> right. So they, it's very difficult. So one thing I have, the other parenting is what you learn from books, what yeah. you learn from uh, your own mistakes. Yeah. And one thing I've realized is that my kids see what I do and they end up doing what I'm exactly. doing. Exactly, yeah. So it's difficult for me as simple as that. If I'm having ice cream and I tell happen. them no, not. that's, that's uh, yeah, injustice absolutely. Uh, to, yeah. to a different level. Yeah. They will they will not like it. Right, right. So I think and you can't explain as, that. Like, exactly. why would you not? Right? Exactly. You can't just say you are a kid, you can't have ice yeah, cream. Why not? Absolutely. Right, right. So I can explain why he can't have thumbs up right. or Coke. I yeah. can explain why you can't have coffee. Yeah. Why you can't have alcohol. Yeah. But I can't explain why ice you can't cream, have chocolate, ice cream. Yeah. Right? So I think that's that's what I realized and they have also learned that I'm extremely disciplined. Right. They will never be able to stop me from running. Right. They will not be able to stop me from eating certain things. So I think that's how they themselves come, came up with scripting. They did the whole really? thing. They, they never really took help. Yeah. And even today, when they come for help, my first thing is you figure it out. Mm. I want them to make that effort. Mm. It's mm. very easy for parents to give the answer. Mm. But I want them to go through that effort mm. early enough mm. and then I can always guide them. Yeah. But I will never give them the answer. Yeah, I'm a new parent and I also realized the one thing, I mean, my son is a very, I mean, he's 14 month old, but uh, I mean, he's glued, uh, he, when he sees TV, he's yeah. very excited because he's seeing a large screen, a lot yeah. of color, right? Now I can't say don't watch because I am watching. Yes. So I have to restrict my own TV, right? I mean, I have to let go a lot of stuff because if I want my son not to watch, I don't have a very logical reason Absolutely. to tell him why you should not watch. Yeah. He can as well watch, he will also enjoy, but he will get an addiction and yeah. so I have to cut down and that's what I learned in parenting exactly what you said you have to start top down yeah you have to see what you should not do and only then you should ask the same you exactly. to uh, what not exactly. to do yeah interesting so um so we have to uh, you know we probably have another 10 odd minutes to go so I'm quickly a few things to 
uh, pick your brain on um, you've been an angel investor you've uh, you know uh, uh, which is a great thing because uh, that's a great ecosystem what we have developed in the past to helping startups if you if you have if you have to if i have to ask you a couple of uh, areas within health and wellness fitness let's say and you say they, uh, that's an area where uh, you know aspiring entrepreneurs startup founders can come up and build something and you have a check ready to mm. help them out right uh, can you think of any one or two areas where you think that okay that's an area where you feel innovation is not there need of the hour specifically into health and wellness which uh, you know you'll be happy to kind of back them up so i think um, you today when you look at cult mm. cult is at the mass end right you had um, in bangalore you had something from um, z i forget the name zen or some some zo gym. zo 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 fitness yeah something yeah, like yeah, that in yeah. um, but i think at the top end of the spectrum a one stop shop for everyone mm. who is willing to pay mm. a certain amount of money for all their needs mm. and that is not only nutrition mm. strength and conditioning mm. flexibility mm. endurance mm. basic coaching it's a full also, stack exactly. it's a full stack solution. but even merchandise mm. even yoga even mm. your massage mm. even your sauna even mm. your gym mm. so basically you have a wardrobe there mm. interesting i will iron and keep your work clothes i will launder mm. it for you mm. you don't need to worry your mm. your exercise clothes also you just dump Mm. I will wash them. I will give it back to you, mm. and I will put your shoes. I will. You have everything. Mm. It's like your runner's hangout. So yeah. You come in the morning. Yeah. In whichever where everything mm. is ready, you mm. just go run around, come yeah. back. Yeah. And then you have your breakfast. You have your everything ready. And yeah. There are people who will pay that premium. Sure. It might not be for masses, but exactly. then there's a niche audience to it, right? Absolutely. I don't know if you know that. I've seen documentaries. I've not been to Japan yet, but in Japan there are these hubs where you can get in. You don't even have to bring your own shoes. Absolutely. They have shoes of different size. They have locker. They have a breakfast. Yeah. They'll have a group who will go out, run, come yeah. back, give the shoe back, get a shower done, go back. Yeah. Right. So, uh, no, that's a very fascinating idea. I really hope someone goes out and uh, build something out there. Yeah. I mean, a bespoke solution where uh, end to end, if you're a runner, if you're a swimmer or a cyclist, you have everything taken care. You just have to get out and just get it done. Absolutely. Right. Anything else you think? Can you think of anything in the space of nutrition? Uh, you know, food. Anything which strikes your mind, so I think which has been your need and no one has built yet. I, yeah. So I think the the um, uh, food and nutrition. one thing which i have seen is um salt sticks okay. very small thing mm. but i don't think uh, either univade or geo or okay. one of these guys mm. are mm. not doing a good job of it some mm. of these nutraceuticals are now coming in mm-hmm. uh, but very small and i think of course uh, if you are able to have uh, points where you can get fresh but nutritional food delivered yeah. okay. people tried it but yeah. i think i think yeah. uh, because of preservatives or because of the transport yeah. Yeah. and the kind of packaging it doesn't work it doesn't work out yeah it doesn't work out yeah. so i think from a nutritional standpoint i think yeah. we are where we are because right. india intrinsically eats fresh food yeah unlike the west yeah. which yeah. is a lot of packaged yeah. right. india still buys fresh vegetables fresh food. Yeah. Yeah. and yeah. Uh, fresh food so yeah. i don't think there is much there yeah interesting cool so um for um for startup founders executives uh, who have heard you so far uh, known this entire diverse uh, uh, background about you know adventure junkie runner corporate executive uh, and guys who are thinking okay enough is enough i got to do something on my health on my fitness i've been on the edge for a long time not that they heard you now and they're going to do it but you know that's a that's a good inspiration coming from someone who's done this for a long yeah. time in a sustainable way what's this one thing you could tell them to say that, okay you know this could be a starting point for you i mean start from here what is that you know they could just get it they're listening to this now they're watching to this and they may want to do this start from tomorrow what is that they can start tomorrow from it could be any i mean not that yeah, i want yeah. you to tell them running sure, but could sure, be anything sure. what could i think uh, you should stop breakfast okay and just walk mm. that's the start mm. i'm not saying run just walk Mm. even half an hour take a good podcast take a downloaded netflix video mm. watch whatever you want to do but just mm. get moving mm. 
at the fixed time every day morning mm. and skip breakfast so essentially intermittent fasting yes. in some way right because fasting has its own yeah. benefits and people can look look it up and it has its own absolutely uh, it may work for some it may not work yeah. for them, but experiment it yeah. and uh, just move your body yes right absolutely. i mean not everyone need to be in great endurance monster just get your walk done yeah. and they probably will graduate from graduate that, right from i mean that. you start exactly. liking your 1k then you started liking your 5k probably all you know in few months you sign up for your 10k race and you're starting there that's how most of us have begun right i mean i remember yes. i had a twisted ankle and uh, i had a 10k race i saw it on a newspaper ad and that's where my running journey started, started. right Absolutely. so everyone has that downside to say this is what where we start great so couple of quick things uh, what's the most extravagant luxurious stuff what you bought for yourself around fitness and health can you, anything strike you fitness and health would be um, the garmin watch and okay. the, yeah. uh, Yeah, they expensive ones. The shoes. Yeah, exactly. yeah, they are the expensive <laughs> ones. Yeah, yeah, it put you off easily thirty, forty yes, grand, exactly. depending on what model you get. Correct. Uh, anything which you bought recently, let's, let's say thousand bucks, again health and fitness arena, which you, which which was super useful to you, and you realize it's uh, underpriced. I mean, you know, it probably should have been little more priced. No, I do. I think uh, what I uh, what I realized is a lot of the lot of the nutraceuticals, mm-hmm. especially from Fast and Up, are mm-hmm. quite uh, optimally priced. Okay. Okay. Uh, compared to a lot of the imported brands. Right. Right. So whether it's your FFSN tablet yeah. that you eat, uh, yeah. drink during the workout, yeah. and some of them are quite uh, quite well priced. Right. Right, so uh, fast enough. So Vijay, if you're listening, there's a cue for you to uh, <laughs> b- you know b- bonk up your prices. <laughs> Great. So. Uh, uh, So you have said in the past that uh, you know, and I, I remember reading somewhere that uh, you know your your uh, time for retirement is when eventually when you want to retire, you want to set up some restaurants. Yes. Uh, around the beach. Yes, that's right. Right. Uh, are you there? Uh, Almost. Almost there. Oh, Great. I'm hoping. I'm hoping. I'm I'm hoping that when my kids uh, become old enough to be independent, I right. mean, when they go out for their undergraduate right. studies. Right. Right. I think my wife and I would want to do that. Terrific. Uh, so so my obvious thing is did you figure out which beach it is and what cuisine the restaurants are going to be? Not yet the cuisine but I'm thinking somewhere on the Konkan coast uh, Excellent. from Goa to Mangalore right. I'm inching towards Mangalore which is still a lot more untouched right. and you can experiment a lot more. Right. So let's see. So you're doing your homework. So yeah, I'm yeah. I'm quite, I mean this gives me a <laughs> confidence that you're almost there. Yeah. If you figure out if not the exact pin code but you yeah. know the location right Correct. so you are you are a man on a mission to make that happen excellent so rajiv uh, brilliant time right i mean uh, i mean the idea of doing this conversation was to kind of uh, unpack the other side of you right uh, uh, someone who is beyond manufacturing beyond retail beyond uh, the title of md uh, what he does right uh, the last thing which i want to check with you is that you imagine a situation where you've given a prime time slot uh, you know it could be an ipl or anything a uh, 10 second slot you know you're not supposed to sell anything you're not going to sell your you know your your products uh, right uh, what would you want to use that 10 seconds and that has a potential to reach a billion people uh, so and you are at the privileged position where whatever you say today would be acted upon so then in 10 seconds uh, how would you want to use that 10 seconds what, what do you want to tell the world watching and listening to you don't be afraid of failures hmm. a failure is something you learn from a mistake is when you repeat your failure yeah so fail but learn from them terrific i can't think of uh, a better way to uh, you know wrap this up um, it's been such an pleasure uh, and um, an awesome time uh, this is the second episode we are doing this and i couldn't have thought of a better guy than you uh, knowing this background of yours uh, knowing this diverse personality what you bring on the table rajiv uh, such a pleasure thank you so much for doing this and i hope uh, everyone who stuck around for this 90 odd minutes listening and watching uh, had a ton of take away and uh, uh, they might have just finished their run or walk listening to this podcast and uh, <laughs> reach out to rajiv message him uh, on different social uh, media platforms and send him a thank you Thank you Rajiv for doing this. Thank you Dilip. It was an absolute pleasure. Great conversation. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you Rajiv. Cheers. Thank you for listening and watching the entire podcast. I would love to get your feedback. You can leave comments here on YouTube and reach out to me on LinkedIn, Twitter or by email. Details of all are mentioned in the description. And also include your suggestions on the other guests I should be speaking to. I have one more request. If you're listening to this on YouTube, 
please subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon to be notified on future releases. If you're listening it on Spotify, please click on the follow button on top left corner and click on the bell button. And if you find the content useful, please leave a rating. If you're listening this on Apple Podcasts, please click on the plus sign on top right corner. You can also leave a rating and review if you like the content. This would mean a lot and encourages me to keep creating useful content in future. Thank you and I will see you again soon on the other side with a new guest.